little palace and a playground. And above all, for 700 years, a family, one family, the Grimaldis. Tonight, Prince Renier and his children, Prince Albert, Princess Caroline, Princess Stephanie, talk to us about their country and their lives in the crucible. All those years of flashbulbs and glamour, of heartbreak and closely held dreams. But let's begin it all by going back to the day most of us first heard about Monaco. And here in New York, we see Grace Kelly as she sails for her marriage to Prince Renier. On April 4th, 1955, the USS Constitution leaves New York, carrying a luminous blonde symbol of the American century. Just a decade after American men proved their courage and muscle in World War II, a 26-year-old American girl was about to make the ultimate cultural conquest, marrying into the ancient aristocracy of Europe. On board her triumphant army of bridesmaids, journalists, a poodle given her by Cary Grant. A picture queen who will become a princess greets her new subjects and is greeted by them in turn as she goes ashore to a tumultuous welcome. No matter that her new country was in fact a tiny tax haven and gambling resort about the size of Central Park and a cove on the French Riviera. No matter that the prince waiting for her there was a virtual stranger, Renier III, a 32-year-old bachelor about town who had decided it was time to get serious and produce an heir to the throne. Without one, his country would revert to France. Will you continue with your career after your marriage? Uh, well, that decision will be made by the prince. In fact, that decision would be to end her still sizzling career. Her films had included High Noon with Gary Cooper. I mean, if you won't go with me now, I'll be on that train when it leaves here. Rear Window, Alfred Hitchcock's masterpiece. Tell me everything you saw and what you think it means. She won an Oscar for The Country Girl. Hey, that's some rock you got there, Sam. In her final movie, High Society, she wore her real engagement ring from The Prince. She said they married because it was simply the right time, though they knew it was taking a huge gamble. Through streets decked with American and Monacan flags, he whisks her off to his pink and white castle on the eve of the wedding of the year. At the civil service in the historic throne room, she looked tired. She and the prince, together for just the third time in their lives, had sat up and talked all night. The next day, the Catholic ceremony. She regal in 450 yards of silk and lace. The prince in a wedding uniform he had designed himself. Though society columnists would note that Europe's great crowned head stayed away sniffing at the casino prince and his movie star bride. Today, 40 years later, a very different Monaco still glitters from its cove on the Riviera. Presiding over it, Prince Renier III, now 73, and his half-American children with their memories of the mother who is gone. The oldest child, Princess Caroline, now 39. I, I sort of visions you of, I was a small child of, of seeing somebody incredibly beautiful and well-dressed going out and so the trail of perfume behind and saying, don't, careful, don't mess my hair or makeup. Stephanie, once the rebellious daughter, is now 31. Princess Grace once said of her, I could have beaten Stephanie like a gong and it wouldn't have made any difference. No, and my daughter's the same way, so. What is it with these women? I don't know, but she's, she's funny. She, you know, I, I threaten to spank her if, you know, she does something wrong and she just looks at me and says, so? And Albert, the heir to the throne who has his mother's profile, his mother's smile. All right, the international poking of nose into your life. He is 38 and pestered continually with questions about who he's dating, will he marry soon, when, why not? It's been very annoying. As you'll see tonight, they are three very different personalities three survivors of the modern monarchy, the privilege of being titled, and also the price. Every moment of their lives, they have been hounded by prurient headlines, predatory cameras, watching, watching, watching. It's in part the consequence of that moment 40 years ago, when their parents, hoping to build a tourism economy, invited the media to help put Monaco on the map. It's a family that was made by publicity and is being destroyed by publicity. It's a very contemporary little fable, the story of this tiny little principality. 
Bob Colicello, who chronicles our celebrity-driven culture. He worries that the children have been virtual human sacrifices since the Grimaldi glamour is still the principal draw. It seems to me that Monaco is a, is a business. It's Monaco Inc., really, and, and it's, its business is tourism, real estate, and to keep that going, you've got to keep a glamorous image going. The great power of the Grimaldis is in the realm of publicity. Monaco still counts on tourism for about 25% of its revenue, even though the current sovereign has been steadily reinventing the country. Prince Rainier III is now, in effect, the CEO of a small but diverse company forced to compete in the world market for its survival. It requires intuition and nerve, the trademark of the Grimaldis since that first one, who 700 years ago tonight, January 8, 1297, disguised himself as a monk, hid his sword under his robe, and conquered the fortress. Through the centuries, the Grimaldi princes, one after the other, would shift, adapt, use their wiles to hold on to the throne. Prince Rainier III has held on for a record 47 years, which doesn't stop anyone from asking when he plans to step down. How will you know when the time is right? Well, I don't know how, how to answer that. How would I know? Uh, I know when people start telling me that I'm not making sense, I guess, I, guess, I don't know. <laughs> It must seem a little strange to have everyone always saying, well, when are you leaving? <laughs> That's right. It's strange and it's not very amiable or nice either. You're very powerful. In what manner? Here. Even given a, what a president of the United States can do. Mm. But there's no abuse. The prince even says maybe the U.S. should try a monarchy instead of our messy elections. The people should choose, but I think it's all the... All that happens beforehand and all the filth and the mud that's thrown about is... It, it's, it's detrimental to the regime, I think, to me, anyway. He did personally transform the tiny resort into a small but modern nation, with the help of the woman who also served as his partner. He first met Grace Kelly when a magazine arranged these photos as a kind of publicity stunt. She was annoyed he was late, and she had to wear the loud flowered dress since her others were wrinkled. You said to me that it was not love at first sight, and that was probably a good thing. I don't really believe in love at first sight. I think true love has to be based on something, uh, at least uh, there is more than a flint. And did you decide at first sight if no, you weren't no, love at no, first no, sight? You no. still, you hadn't decided. No. In conversation, the prince is one moment charming, then clouded over. Sentences trail off into his own thoughts, memories. Was she the most beautiful thing you'd ever seen? Well, surely, yes. Uh, I think probably uh, it was fairly obvious. The sovereign chastises the commoner's choice of words. But those are wishy-washy uh, <laughs> expressions which I don't sort of use. Uh, What's the important thing in a marriage? Mutual understanding. I mean, nobody must take over too much. In, 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 I don't like these families where there's a dominating father. We now know, of course, that the two of them had not waltzed into any fairy tale. Theirs would be just a real family with duties, joys, dreams, disappointments, and death. It was once said of Monaco, it's a country small in size, but epic in anguish. As everyone knows, in September 1982, Princesses Grace and Stephanie would leave the family's retreat up on the cliff for Monaco. Mom and I were just so close. And like, you know, two sisters, two best friends. That that's what was the hardest. They were traveling down the twisting roads in their British rover when Princess Grace seemed to lose control of the car, struggled to regain it, and couldn't. Stephanie would later tell her father that her mother just seemed to panic. The car went hurtling 110 feet off a steep ridge. Stephanie had a broken vertebra. She was lucky not to have been paralyzed. She was just 17. What happened that day was, uh, it was the most tragic day of my life. I know that I did everything I could to, for it not to happen, for the car not to 
go off the road. You, you grabbed know? the brake? Yeah, I tried everything, but it was too late, so um, then I know I, uh, I ran out of the car, tried everything to, got help, I don't know. And do you feel it was a stroke or something with the car? I don't know. I don't want to know. Even though the evidence confirmed that her mother was driving, it didn't stop the tabloids. As you know, there were so many rumors that you were driving the car, that you were arguing at the time. Once and for all, what really did happen? Uh, first of all, I'd like them to try and, um, and put themselves in my skin and hear such a thing being said. And it's easy to hurt people and, and say lies. But, um, they should try and turn it over to them and try and just sit and take in somebody saying that, in other words, you killed your mother. It's hard enough even, you know, losing your mother and then being blamed for it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's terrible. And um, can't you just leave people in their, in their pain and, and stop finding reasons and blaming it on this and that and whatever, it's done. Grace Kelly died at the age of 52. This time, so many world leaders, including the royals, sent representatives to honor her in life and death. It's strange in her life because her mom lived exactly 26 and a half years in the States and 26 and a half years here. 26 years to create a modern family that would celebrate the 700th anniversary of the Grimaldi reign tonight. In a moment, Princess Caroline, on her personal journey through the tragedies in her life, the deaths of her mother and her husband. Strength comes when you're in a very narrow um, alley and have no way of turning back, I think. And who will Prince Albert marry? Did you really say, by the way, recently, I suppose now that John Kennedy is married, that bumps me up to number one? More of the royal family when primetime continues. Traditionally, you do not ask princely families direct questions, nor, for that matter, American-style personal ones. So we were surprised by the way the Grimaldi family members spoke about themselves and each other, and even the frustrations of being in jobs chosen for them by destiny. We also wondered how the parents prepared the children for these lives. So we started leafing through a video scrapbook of the family at home, and through rare interviews with Princess Grace, including one filmed just weeks before her death. It's a girl, Caroline Louise Margaret, a little princess. Right now, 1957, a, a baby is born. A princely father pulls out the home movie camera. They're a little out of focus. Yes. Does it seem a long time ago? It does. It does seem quite a long time. The new mother, who had been so independent and free-spirited in Hollywood, would now change becoming surprisingly traditional and politically conservative on the women's movement. Very often I think uh, the price for independence and freedom is often solitude and loneliness. On rearing children. Of course, I rather deplore the lack of discipline everywhere today. The natural role for a woman, she said, is pillar of the family. She was such a loving and caring human being. She would prepare breakfast, and sometimes my father would cook pancakes for us, too. That was the one moment of the day where we could uh, be informally as a family, and that was very important for us. Prince Albert on his mother. So how about his father? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> my father, uh, well, uh, first of all, is a very shy man, and a lot of people don't, I don't realize that. Shy? Yeah. I think it's better to be sort of shy. What one calls shyness is maybe discretion. He also had a temper, and he showed us very clearly when we annoyed him. But it would die down as quickly as it had flared up. 
but he's got a wonderful sense of humor. As the firstborn, Caroline was reared the old-fashioned way, tutored at home until age eight, and then sent to Catholic schools. Carefully watched by a mother who says she was strict. I'm not as strict as my mother was with us, I don't think, but I am strict. She tried to persuade her children that the protocol and pageantry were their duty too. But Caroline once asked, why do I have to be a princess? The result, a time-honored mother-daughter battle of wills. Oh, and there's this other thing on the um, oh, 29th. I didn't get it out You won't have one moment to speak. It'll be a mob scene. It'll be a mess. I don't think you should go. Today, Princess Caroline is still an intense, highly intelligent woman who came storming down the hall to our interview wearing the turban that's her signature these days. She has said it's hard to get used to people looking at you all the time, adding, I always realize I haven't chosen it. She is also famously irritated by interviewers, most at home in the sanctuary of her books. She reads poetry, literature, philosophy in five languages. French, English, Italian. Italian, yeah. German, German, Spanish. Yes. Spanish. Yes. Is that all? <laughs> well, I did do study Latin and Greek um, in school, of course. It's hard to keep a step ahead of her. I just am happy <laughs> if I can keep a step behind her. <laughs> Caroline Louise Marguerite. When Princess Caroline was just 21 and still living at home, she decided to break away by marrying Philippe Junot, a 38-year-old playboy. Five months later, he was linked with other women. Sixteen months later, it was officially over. She attributes the mistake a bit to her naivete, a bit to her rebellion. Maybe that generation of, of girls who were raised in Europe, I, where there were strong principles that you did not leave home um, until you were married. You just, you didn't leave home, even if you worked. So having been told that, that I wasn't going to leave home unmarried, by the time I was 21, I thought, you know, that was a way of independence, which it isn't. I mean, it's a foolish thing to think. And if you have a rebellious child, if you figured out what you were going to say mm -hmm. yet? The thing to remember is that children are not ours. They don't belong to us. They come through us. So... You can just show them the doors, maybe try to give them keys if you have them, but they've got to choose the door and, and use the key. Protection has its limits. It doesn't mean uh, stifling or, or, or smothering people. And in the name of, of, of love and trying to do a meaning well, a lot of damage is done. Would you do anything differently as a parent if you were back holding the camera and starting again? No, I don't think so, no. Maybe I'd be more careful with the focus this time. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, Prince Renier and Princess Grace did try something different with second-born Albert, who went to college in America and spent a lot of time in Philadelphia with the All-American Kellys. That's young Albert rowing. Grace's father and brother were Olympic medalists. Albert would later put together the Monaco bobsled team, which came in second in the French championships. He's informal, accessible. He's even been seen in Monaco discotheques singing his specialty, Elvis. Take my hand, take my whole life too, but I can't help falling in love with you, and so on. He's game for anything and loves to have a good time, his friends say, almost as much as he hates being asked, well, you know. Princess Stephanie, mm -hmm. I didn't put her up to this. I said, if you could ask one question, what would it be? And do you know what she said? When is he going to get married? <laughs> is that really what she said? That's really what she said. Um, as I said before, I'll uh, cross that bridge when I come to it. He has denied a series of romances, even repeatedly denied that he's gay. So what's taking so long? He says it's a tough job. And it has to be right. She's inevitably going to be compared to my mother, and they're going to make her life miserable just in that respect. My mother was pretty much unique. Grace worked hard. Grace was on the phone calling uh, the Reagans when he was governor of California, making sure they came to a party there. Again, writer Bob Colicello. And it is something that many modern, you know, women don't want to do. It means getting dressed up every day and every night and going out and smiling for the camera. 
Colicello says even if Prince Albert looks for another Hollywood star, today's standards of glamour and, well, grooming are not the same as they once were. And is there a star who would want to give up her career for the gilded halls of a palace? Even though the one in Monaco has 225 rooms, this is the Duke of York bedroom. This, the gallery of mirrors. So the chef has a wonderful dish he invented. Here's Princess Grace showing off the royal kitchen. Today, Princess Caroline has taken over many of her mother's national responsibilities. The ceremonial occasions, patronage of the ballet, the foundation, the literary awards. But she also seems to dream of privacy and a serious life of her own. Do you ever say to yourself, not one more duty to do? Oh, yes, every day. <laughs> yes. And it's like a dog biting its tail, you know. The more you do for, for people and the more you have to do it, the more they demand of you. And if you say, maybe I don't feel up to it, they say, what? You can't let us down. And do you think someday if your brother marries and... Mm -hmm. Absolutely, his wife will take over all those, those Looking functions. Looking forward to that day. Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> Princess Caroline describes her brother. Absolutely huge kindness. And I think people take advantage of it, but don't know it, so don't know the extent, the depth of it. Prince Albert describes his older sister. She was actually pretty rough with me as a kid. She bit me a few times. She pulled my hair, scratched me. It's a pattern over the centuries. The shy Grimaldi princes the high-spirited women. This princess was the driving force to build the first casino. Another, Princess Alice, an American from New Orleans, was openly unfaithful, provoking her husband, the prince, to slap her in public. And Prince Rainier's mother, Charlotte, was a legend all her own. She was the child of an illicit love affair between Prince Louis II and the daughter of a family laundress. Later, Princess Charlotte would have a bitter divorce from Manier's father, and then come to her son's big wedding, escorted by a renowned convicted jewel thief. The grandmother's spirit and beauty live on in the granddaughter who loved her. She was a very unconventional person, which is very reassuring for a young child. You feel much safer when you see that your, your grandparents are actually bolder than you would even th dare to be yourself. And no child would be bolder than Princess Stephanie, a daddy's girl. The most irrepressible child when little, the most impetuous as a teen. As a young woman, she would design clothes, make a hit record. And how about a princess with a tattoo? She's so independent. I just want to know where that all came from. Maybe it was just born that way, but uh, um, I don't think it's really independence that I, I just... I have a love of life uh, that is very big, and I just don't want to miss anything. Caroline on Stephanie. My sister, ah, she has a lot of it's great enthusiasm and joy in, a, in what she does. I'm a much more pessimistic person, so I'm always amazed at <laughs> You are a pessimistic person? Oh, completely, yes. <laughs> But she was also the rock on which her father leaned at her mother's funeral. And then, eight years later, her second husband, the father of her three children, was killed in an accident, a speedboat race. With immense dignity, the princess willed herself and her family through yet another nightmare. I admire her a lot because she's been through a lot in her life, too. And, um... She's a very strong lady. It's not character, I wouldn't think. And um, they maybe gave me strength because they relied on me. It's when you have no choice. Strength comes when you're in a very narrow um, alley and have no way of turning back, I think. It's um, circumstances. I ask Princess Caroline if she has a book or a poem she always recommends to others. And she told me that she thinks T.S. Eliot's poem, The Wasteland, is something young people should tackle. I was leafing through it last night and came upon a passage that says, 
There is not even silence in the mountains. There is not even solitude in the mountains. How did Princess Stephanie manage to hold her head high after her husband's devastating betrayal? At one point, you just say enough. <laughs> you know, like, stop pointing at me. It's just enough is enough. Mustering the strength to carry on when prime time continues. Diane Sawyer. It is amazing that in 1997, there is a ruler in Europe who has the power to exile people if he chooses, rewrite the Constitution, have final authority over the daily life of Monaco's 30,000 residents, of which 5,000 are citizens. And he does it all without a real army. In fact, we're told there are more musicians in Monaco than soldiers and guards. But here's the question. Apart from tourist appeal, can anyone really justify a monarchy at the end of the 20th century? On that subject, Prince Renier has always said much what his wife said in an interview. She quoted the mother in The Grapes of Wrath who wondered, but how will we know who we are without our past? I think royalty above all represents a continuity and a continuity that is important in all lives and I think is important to, to everyone. I think some, a lot of the troubles today stem from the fact that uh, young people don't know who they are um, and, and need that uh, feeling of tradition and continuity. Spoken like the wife of the longest reigning monarch in European history and the only absolute monarch left. How much money does he have? It's a secret. And a lot of other information about the country is tightly controlled. I've heard reporters say they think phones are tapped. No. No, it's completely... They think everything is watched. No, no. If, you know, if you've heard of some, I'd like you to tell me, because <laughs> it, it is not at all in, in the... Of, of what I would wish for, anyway. When you're in Monaco, you do notice that the prince and his police keep a very tight watch over the streets of their country. They say the surveillance has to be high-tech because of all of the glittering, visiting high rollers. The problem, of course, where there are jewels, there are jewel thieves, and Monaco has responded with a legendary security system. There are 75 cameras watching over an area less than a square mile, and they can see whether you're picking a pocket, or for that matter, what you're reading in the newspaper. The prince can point to one of the lowest crime rates in the world. I think if you think of Prince Rainier as a CEO, you would have to give him pretty high marks. This is Andrew Jack, Paris correspondent for the prestigious Financial Times of London. He says, for Monaco, absolute power has worked. There's no question that he took a pretty small country that wasn't very diversified, and after the war, he's turned it into a, what was at least until the uh, late 80s or early 90s, a thriving place. Prince Rainier has even reclaimed land from the sea, an engineering feat that took almost a decade. By layering rock in 131 feet of water, he added nearly 55 acres, enlarging the country nearly 20%. And as a credit to him, today gambling is just 3% of an economy driven by environmentally correct businesses, tourism, and most recently, banking. Because of a series of pivotal deals the prince made with France, Monaco is no longer a tax haven for French nationals, but it has become a booming offshore banking center for everyone else. Plenty of investment incentives and secrecy. Is there any way to make sure that the mafia is not here laundering money? The mafia is all over the place. I mean, uh, this is not particularly favorable to, to money laundering. It's small, it's very controlled, it's very watched. Uh, You're confident that it's not happening? It's not happening. No, I can't say that it's not happening. You can't say it's not happening in the United States, too. I mean... <laughs> he says they have tried to tighten controls. And there are bigger worries ahead for Monaco. Last year, Monaco had a budget deficit for the first time. And does anyone really think that the residents of Monaco will tolerate an absolute monarch for another 700 years? Look at the other royals in Europe. The Queen of England is, in effect, a figurehead. The Swedish royalty are the same. 
The king of Spain has some real power, but no one has more than the man in Monaco, for now. I think over the last few years, there's something of a cloud gathering on the horizon. And there's a real question about both its financial security, um, its diversity, and really the future of its political institutions. Does the prince himself think that in the future... That that degree of power will be allowed to persist? Maybe not. Maybe there'll be some modification. Maybe uh, they'll have to modify the constitution. I don't know. The man who will have to grapple with that unknown is Prince Albert, speaking here at the United Nations, still awaiting his father's decision on the timing of his succession. We don't necessarily talk about it. I have a feeling that uh, we will both realize that the time has come just by mutual agreement. I don't want to be locked up, and I don't think Albert wants to be locked up in a date. Prince Renier told us he'd prefer that Albert be married, though he was single and 26 when he took over. When I think back to the young man in the coronation ceremony all those years ago, if there were one thing you wish someone had told you on that day when you became the sovereign, what would that be? I tried to tell Albert, it, it's a very solitary job. When you make a decision, you've got to make it alone. And that's why it, it, it is a very lonely job. And not just for him. There have been all those stories of Princess Grace, her isolation, her unhappiness. You said once to a biographer that she seemed melancholy at times. I think so, yes. I think first she regretted her profession. Regretted leaving her profession so much, she announced that she was going to do one more film. But the Monegasques were horrified. It never happened. And uh, then I think, you know, it was very difficult coming here and not managing the language too well. Um, coming to the small community where a lot of people were pushing either to meet, to see, or to criticize, and she knew that. And I think the effort she made to take over these people was quite extraordinary. By charm, by niceness. There is a 13th century legend called the Curse of the Grimaldis. It says no princely marriage will ever be untroubled. Since his wife's death, Prince Renier has had to guide his children through a series of romantic hardships, usually in the white-hot glare of the press. The only interesting thing is the scoop some kind of sensational scandal. Is that the hardest part of being a parent, not being able to protect your children from pain? Ah, yes. That's, that's, uh, and protect them, protect them from themselves, which is often a difficult thing to do. Most recently, Stephanie, over her father's objections, fell in love with her bodyguard, Daniel de Cruet, who was already married twice and had a child with a third woman out of wedlock. Princess Stephanie had two children with him and then married him, insisting she finally had a man in her life she could trust. The two of them were on Good Morning America together just last year, telling what they had learned in their marriage. Love and uh, humility. Yeah, it's, it's the right words, yeah. humility. But four months ago, the European magazines trumpeted photos of de Cruet making love with a Belgian stripper. Princess Stephanie, the owner of a store and restaurant in Monaco, still went to work, determined, she says, to keep her chin up, even if her spirits sank. You have been through such a rough couple of months. Of course, you know, it's still so new and fresh, and uh, I don't know how long the wound will take to, to heal, but uh, it's sure that I see men in a very, very different way now. I never thought it would happen to us, so now I'm like saying if I didn't think of him, then they're all the same. And it's just, I think, a big, big disappointment in, uh, in the human being. I think that's the main thing. Someone said that suffering is there to teach us wisdom. What have you learned? Um, I think it's the, the, the main thing is I learned a lot about myself. And uh, the best way I found to deal with it was just to look at it straight on, look at the problem straight on. And, and so I did it that way by being in my, in my store, in my restaurant, I, right after everything happened and facing the people's look and 
their remarks, and that's what they helped me. They said things to you? Not directly to me, but you know, the whispering. And so, I don't know if you really gain wisdom by suffering, but, you know, at one point you just say enough, <laughs> you know, like stop pointing at me, it's just enough is enough. Within days of the photos, she was divorced. She says her brother and sister had the sensitivity to let her handle it alone. And what about her father? You know, he's uh, just there and, um, you know, holding my hand in a very discreet way. As he had so long ago. I know he's there and... Uh, no, I told you so. No. Maybe he was thinking about it. No. Princess Stephanie said to us that recently you had been there to hold her hand. I think children should know that it's not a judge sitting there to, to uh, wave this finger at them saying, I told you so, and, and keep the door open. She has said that the man she loves the most is you. For a moment, the prince lost his composure, his eyes filled with tears. By the way, you may have read that Prince Renier had heart bypass surgery in 1994. He told us that today his health is good. When we come back, more surprises from the beautiful and mysterious Princess Caroline. Because if you don't want to talk about it, people don't say that she's hiding something. And Prince Rainier's thoughts on marrying again, when primetime continues. As you'll see again, the three very different children face the next chapter, each in his and her own way. Perhaps Princess Stephanie's the most eager. She told us however rough it all gets, including the gossip, she wouldn't change this life for anything in the world. While for Princess Caroline, who has done so much publicly, there does seem to have been a private toll. In an interview 14 years ago, Grace Kelly would talk about what her children had been put through already by the paparazzi how young Princess Stephanie hid in the trunk of a car to avoid photographers, and how Caroline would burst into tears. Particularly Caroline has felt very much, I suppose, like uh, a, a hunted animal. We have talked about the unrelenting public pressure. Does it ever get any easier? No, well, it seems to get worse. Um, it's strange times we're living. I think the interest of the, of the public is largely fabricated and artificial. I think you create a need, like, you know, people drink too much Coca-Cola or sweets or take sleeping pills and then say they can't do without it, but they haven't really tried and they didn't know if they needed it in the first place. And when you learned that photos had been taken through your window into mm -hmm. your house... Oh, well, it's shocking, yes. Rage? It's, uh, yes, it's disgust more than rage. I think we're past, I'm past the rage phase um, because it doesn't, it's, it doesn't bring you anything. You can't fight, so it's a totally losing battle. Because of those photos, as you know, everyone is concerned about your health. Mm -hmm. I think my health is, is all right, I suppose. I mean, it's not a subject uh, I really want to discuss, but... Because, again, I think your brother has said that that there is a skin condition involved. There have been other reports about cancer. It's really something I would rather not discuss. I haven't even discussed it much with my brother, so I don't know, I don't even know if he said it or, or what, but... In fact, we were told by several people it is not cancer, that some of her hair fell out, perhaps because of hormones, perhaps because of stress, and that she shaved the rest. There are enough aspects of my life people look into that I don't... Um, really want to talk about it. Not that there's anything to hide, but I don't think... It's an awkward thing, because if you don't want to talk about it, people then say that she's hiding something, and yet... Um, it's just, you know, I don't think it's not that interesting. If I were extremely ill, I wouldn't be here, so... <laughs> yet in an act that shows how complicated she is, and contradictory, how private and defiant, just a few months ago, she posed for these photographs by François-Marie Bagnier. There is a touch of eternity on these two portraits because the shape of the skull, the attitude, the way she is in life. Princess Caroline still a puzzle, even to her family. I don't see her as often as I used to. and uh, Sometimes she, she forgets to say or to tell us, to, to inform us about different things. 
that concern her or, or, or her kids. So we always have to uh, kind of pull information out of her. If you woke up the next day in heaven, what would you love to see there? Maybe nothing, just peace. <laughs> In another part of the palace, Prince Albert seems relaxed about the role fate has assigned him. He also told us that in this day and age, it doesn't make sense that women can't inherit the throne. And in the future, he may well try to change it. I can't see why that shouldn't be. And if someone said to you, we're going to change everything, and now it's yours to do. Me? <laughs> Is that what you would say? Yeah. Me? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's... Too big a job. Scary, yes. Do you want to marry again? No. No. Well, at least for the moment, I don't know. You told someone once that you couldn't remarry for the children, even if it meant loneliness, that it would be your decision. Has it been difficult? No. The prince, by all accounts a doting grandfather of his five grandchildren, told us the secret is living in the present, that living in memory is the problem. That's when you're going to feel miserable and, and look for some compensation of company. And, and, but I've never, never had the, um, the urge to remarry. My children, well, I've never spoken about it to my children. They've never spoken about it to me. It's been a sort of understanding. And, you know, they've given me enough troubles. I wasn't going to add new troubles on. <laughs> so I think it's a better solution was to keep it as it was. It's been written that one of Princess Grace's favorite quotes was from the poet Khalil Gibran. The words, where love beckons you, follow him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams, he is for your growth. Don't remember, I think she said in an interview that um, when somebody said, well, what would you like to be remembered as? Oh, I'd like to be remembered as a, as a decent human being and a caring one. Again, it was her last interview just seven weeks before her death. And someday history may record that once a beautiful woman and her husband, the prince, cared profoundly about a little country and preserved an ancient institution against all odds. But whatever history writes on this 700th anniversary, Americans who have watched from afar understand that perhaps their lasting monument is a family. Next on 13... Diane Sawyer. And as we leave, we'll show you a few more scenes from this 700-year-old scrapbook. And hope you'll join us again next week when Sam Donaldson and I will be back for another edition of Primetime Live.